City. No. <clears throat> so just give me the quote. Just yeah. Good evening. Welcome to the City Council meeting for Monday, January 8th, 2018. This is our first meeting of the new year. And with that, we will start with the roll call vote, please. Council Member DeRosset. Here. Council Member Lane. Here. Vice Mayor Klein. Here. Council Member Rhino. Here. And Mayor Vieira. Here. Next, we will have the invocation by Chris Grigson from the Valley Christian Center. If he is here. I do not oh. see him in the audience. Mr. Shepard, would you like to lead us in the invocation? Our dearest Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for another year in the City of Ceres. We thank you for giving us the ability as citizens to come before our city government and express ourselves. We thank you for most assuredly the rain we've gotten today. And we wish the blessings, your blessings upon all of the citizens of Ceres. We wish that you would protect our police and fire and for the next year, give us your blessings so that we may be a better city and better citizens. We ask all of this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Pledge of allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under, under God. God indivisible with, with liberty, liberty and, and justice, justice for all <laughs> thank you mr shepherd okay we have one presentation this evening um, <laughs> from the ground up a nature education program follow-up Okay, good evening. Thank you for allowing me to present this evening. Um, I wanted to share a follow-up on a program that we held this past fall uh, at Ceres River Bluff Regional Park. It was a new and unique program for us um, here at the Ceres Recreation Department. Cambria and I actually um, volunteered our time and applied for a grant, and we had 15 children out at River Bluff Regional Park. We held seven classes down at the Lower River Bluff. Um, we used, we uh, actually asked for volunteers from our community uh, to come out and present on topics each week to our students. And so day one, we had Wilderness First Aid with Brandy Meyer. Um, so here you can see some of the students participating in different activities. They learned all about how to bandage wounds and they got a first aid kit. So each week we kind of built upon their skills out uh, uh, down in the Lower Bluff. So. Um, kind of giving children an opportunity, exposing them to nature um, <coughs> and learning in nature. So we actually had Rosemary Martinez from our um, planning department uh, do bird identification. So we got to know the Lower River Bluff really well with these kiddos. We hiked all over the place, and so they got to find all the birds that are down there. There are tons of birds down at the Lower River Bluff. Um, and she was able to show them the different birds and they had little books on how to identify them. <coughs> the following week, we studied Native American traditions with Angela Mendoza. So the kids learned about native symbols, flint napping. They, we actually brought a barbecue down to the lower bluff and shucked corn and made barbecued corn for their snack. Um, so it was all about really allowing them the opportunity for free, unstructured play, uh, while also learning about different um, skills that they could use in nature. There's a lot of studies that go into how much better um, children do when they are able to be exposed to nature. Why isn't this working for me? Sorry. Okay, so on day four, we did shelter building with Buzz Clark. 
And um, some of those shelters actually lasted the entire time we were down there. They might still be down there. They might be being used. We hope not. Um, <laughs> but we, we kind of taught the kids how to build an appropriate shelter for their size. Um, we talked about how the smaller the shelter, the warmer they would be, lining it with leaves. We gave them emergency blankets. So all of the supplies that we were able to give these kids, we were able to purchase with the donation or the grant we got from Walmart. So um, we were able to make this program really affordable. All of the students, we saw tremendous growth in them. When they first started, um, they were afraid to get dirty. By week seven, we couldn't get them out of the dirt. Um, we also allowed a lot of um, a lot of freedom. We, we didn't helicopter them. So no one got hurt, fortunately, except for my child, which he gets hurt everywhere he goes. Um, but we, we wanted to incorporate risk into this learning environment because you learn better when there's a little element of fear and giving them that independence. And so this was just a great opportunity. So a lot of these kiddos walked away um, from this program just more mature. Um, so we did some fishing with Skylar Johnson. So we taught them how to thread a line, bait a hook, and proper knots. And then they got to cast their poles into the lake or the pond. We didn't actually catch anything, but there are fish out there. We saw lots of people fishing every time we were down there. This program certainly gave me a greater appreciation for what we have in Ceres River Buff Regional Park. So I'm really excited for the, the construction that will be happening this year. Um, we did some plant identification with Pam Speed from California Landscape Supply. So we kind of hiked around, identified the different native species, and then all of the species that are down there that are non-native that were transferred via wind or birds um, or people. Um, so and then they got to leave with their own plants. So each week we also did a craft that kind of um, went with the theme of the day. And day seven, we did fire building with the series fire department. So Chief Scola came out with his crew and prepared a campsite or the fire site. And we actually did it from like from the ground up, the name of the program. So we built our fire pit and talked about wind and all the things that you need to consider when you're building a safe fire and camping. And then they all got to roast marshmallows. So it was perhaps their favorite day of the entire uh, eight week program. So we did several hikes and sightseeing. Um, we went to the Howie Stevenson Memorial, and I used that as a learning opportunity to talk about how important it is to respect our public safety officers, police and fire. Um, and actually, during the, that particular day, um, I asked all of the students if any of them had police or fire um, or anyone who had served in the military in their family, and our youngest um, student was five years old and his father was actually killed in the line of duty um, while serving in the military and he shared that story with us when we were at the Howie Stevenson Memorial so it's like kind of one of those things I'll never forget um, but it was just you know it's, they definitely bonded we let them climb every tree that they walked by we let them catch frogs out of the pond um, they definitely had great experiences we built some tree people and we made slime and we we left our mark down there for sure this hill the first week we were like we cannot let them climb that hill it is straight up <laughs> and there's lots of rocks yeah that lasted one week so after that we allowed them to free climb every day um, that they were down there and it turns out that kids are really good climbers fortunately nobody got hurt <laughs> So these are just our nature warriors. We gave each of them a name. A couple of them. We had three groups of siblings. Um, then Trevor is my little guy, and Cambria had her son out there as well. So it was a great opportunity for us to bond with our kids as well as um, exposing other children to nature. And they ranged in age from five years old to 12 and a half. And obviously, our nature leaders, Cambria and Tracy. So um, we presented this slideshow to our, the parents. So wh one of the unique things that we didn't do is we didn't allow the parents to come down the hill. So 
apparently I'm pretty trustworthy looking because all the parents left their children with me at the top of the hill and we would hike them down. So there's tons of hiking trails. If you guys haven't spent time down there, you really need to. So each week we would just hike them down and it kind of also, that encouraged their independence from their parents as well. So this slideshow was the first opportunity that parents had to really see what their kids did down there. We made hiking, walking sticks for them, they had backpacks, they got a compass, they got a first aid kit. So they really walked away equipped with some of those little survival tools that they would need. Um, that was really our idea for that. And so then this presentation we gave to the parents here at the community center and um, most of the parents were like, when are you doing this again? We want to sign our kids back up for it. Um, I, I don't know that we'll be able to emulate this exactly. Uh, we certainly want to do something like this, maybe on a smaller scale again, because we just got such great feedback from it, and we had to turn people away because we just couldn't, the numbers, we wanted to make sure it was a manageable size for us. So um, just wanted to come and show you what we've done. We're definitely going to be emphasizing nature again this year. Uh, we're doing uh, two campouts. We're actually going to do a teen campout separate from our family campout, and then we'll do a family campout again, and then we intend to do another nature program if construction at River Bluff, the Lower Bluff, allows for it. So um, we've, I think we've found our niche in the recreation world because um, it's a, kind of a unique program that nobody else is doing around us, and so I definitely want to expand upon it. Plus, it's a passion of mine, outdoor recreation. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys had an opportunity to see what we did, and thank you for allowing me to present. Thank you very much. I think that's, a, that's an interesting and, and great program that you have. I wish that more of uh, the youth could experience that. So thank you. Or heck, what about us older people? You should oh, do a program true. for us older people. You can climb all those hills you want. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, with that, we will move on to citizens' communication to council on matters not included on the agenda. While the city council welcomes and encourages participation in city council meetings, Adopted rules allow no more than five minutes for expression of non-agenda items. Matters under the jurisdiction of the City Council and not on the posted agenda may be addressed by the general public. However, California law prohibits the City Council from taking action on any matter which is not on the posted agenda unless it is determined to be an emergency by the City Council. Citizens are entitled to address the City Council on any agenda item subject to the five-minute provision. At this time, is there anyone that would like to speak to the council on a non-agenda item? If so, please come forth and state your name. Uh, Dave Pratt of Series. Um, I see I made the Series Courier again. Uh, Jeff put me in as poo poo in the new 100th anniversary plaque that's going in. Uh, that wasn't my intention. I think it's going. It looks great, and it's going to be. Uh, pretty good that it, I just want to let everybody know that they need to kind of do something to make sure it stays that way uh, anyways um, I see I say they finally start cleaning up along along the bike path between uh, Hatch and well Fowler uh, right now they got everything else chained up because they're doing uh, our lines and stuff uh, and, it, and I even picked up a few things after they'd cleaned up. Somebody done, uh, threw out there just a few items. But uh, also the need to do is like that little stretch of land that's between the canal and the fence line to make sure that's taken care of too. Otherwise, all the weeds is going to grow there. It maybe might use a little roundup and stuff and then the trash that, that they're dumping along there too. My big deal is, is I know last council meeting, you're taking funds out of, you're taking funds out of the, out of the utilities and, and paying bills. My problem my deal is uh, er, just about every council meeting I show up here, you guys are always whining about how you didn't see the market drop out and you just kept spending while, and the market never, Never got better, and you still spend it. You spend a hundred over a hundred grand putting the word series on both sides of <coughs> uh, Whitmore overpass that nobody can see. You guys put uh, a handicap 
uh, ramps in, in uh, areas and you're not even putting uh, sidewalks. Uh, you put expensive roundabouts and an expensive clock downtown that you ripped out, out and you got these signs at both ends. Well, one thing is I don't see is any signs that tell, that, that tells me what's, what is downtown. The only thing that I'm glad to see shall move back, back uh, but the only uh, people traveling north can get off and if they like shell, but everybody, everybody heading south and just wave bye bye as they pass by. Uh, as far as taking money out of the utilities, you got you you, you raise the utilities because you said you had to have so much money in there for unseen issues. Well, I didn't realize the unseen issues that you had to pay um, bills. That money is supposed to go for the water or for the sewer system. We're not, excuse me, we're not taking the money out of there. We're, it's a uh, bridge loan that will be paid back when the cash flow comes in. So, so none of that money is being used for anything other than what it was identified for. So basically, it's just uh, it's a it's a it's a cash flow issue. Yes, and it seems like we're still going to have cash flow issue issues if we don't if nothing really comes gets better. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Leonard Shepard. I'm happy to be back in the new year. I'm happy to see that I don't have to drive to the car wash to get my car washed. The good Lord did that for me. <laughs> it's a wonderful way to start off a new year, and hopefully we'll keep it that way for a while. Maybe the good Lord will give us some enough water to start filling reservoirs and and refilling our groundwater supply so we might be able to hold off on river water a while longer, I don't know. But I just want to say, this year you have an opportunity to do what is right one of the things I'd like you to see is started it a little bit at the end of last year was looking at some of our, I call them odious laws, but uh, other people might not call them that. Um, some of the, the laws the city has, especially about citizens' rights and the rights of the citizen to enjoy themselves. I, I saw a sign one time, it was one of those things on the internet that was funny, can you believe this? And the sign said, this is your city park. No walking, no bicycling, no skateboarding, no picnicking, and it went through a whole list of no, 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 don't do that. And then it said at the bottom, enjoy your park. We started that a few years ago with telling people that they couldn't walk in, in a city park, have a cigar and a b glass of wine, or as long as they didn't get in other people's faces. But three people were able to get the city council, not you folks, but the city council at the time, to pass an ordinance that you could not have a glass of wine, a cigar, a cigarette, a pipe, you couldn't do anything like that in your city park, no matter what. That, I said then and I'll say it again, the more laws you have on the books, every time you add one, you ought to make it up, you make your mind up to take away, look at all the laws that are on the book and take away those that are really odious. Ones that really take people's rights away 
because they're paying for it. I know that there were, at that time, there were three people that complained, and it wasn't the average ordinary person they were complaining about. They were complaining about gangs. The gang bangers go in there and smoke pot and they drink. Well, that wasn't the, the normal citizen. And it was a thing that they should have called the, the city police and said, these people are doing this. And, but they didn't. They just, the city decided just to make a boom, take care of it all by banning everything. I hope you won't do that with stuff this year. And make it your duty to see if you can't find some of those laws that are taking away citizens' rights and repealing them. So, Happy New Year. And thank you, sir, for the rain. And all of you, I hope you had a Good Christmas and a happy new year, and let's get to work. Yeah. Good evening, Sheila Brandt. Um, I just want to say, I personally think downtown looks awesome. I, I, when you go over, over Park Street and you come in from the other side, it looks so great seeing all the lights down Main Street, well, not Main Street, but our um, main downtown area and the Siri signs, awesome. I think it's absolutely great. I can't wait till um, Pasta Pronto or Pronto Pasta gets open and we really get busy down there and get more shops open. And I, I wish citizens would realize that We've got to shop locally, because if we don't build our tax base up by shopping here and spending our money here, so that goes into our coffer for us to spend the money, we're not going to get anywhere. And so I think that's what citizens need to realize, that we need to shop more locally, spend our money here, because our money that's spent here is going to only improve our town. But I just wanted to tell you guys, great job. Is there anyone else that would like to speak to the council on a non-agenda item? Okay. All right, we'll move on to appointments to boards and commissions. We have two items this evening. The first one is the mayor appointments of council members to various committees. Um, in our packet, there is the um, list of the current committees and the representatives on the council that are current members for that. And moving forward to 2018, we um, like to review that and see if everyone is still on board with those committees or if there are other changes that need to be made. Um, at this time, I can go through the list and when we get there, if there's someone that wants to change, we can have a discussion about that. Um, unless there's an objection, I'll, I'll stay on the Alliance uh, Committee. There doesn't seem to be too many meetings with that. Um, how about Councilmember Rhino, the series partnership for healthy children? That's fine. Okay. Um, we're all on the former series redevelopment agency. Councilmember Lane, um, the Christmas festival committee still. Okay. And Councilmember Lane and Drossett, the city schools committee still. Okay. Concerts in the park, Councilmember Rhino and vice mayor Klein. That's yes. still good. Okay. Um, the County City Selection Committee, I'll go ahead and stay with that. Um, the East Stanislaus Integrated Regional Water Management Program, Council Member Lane, are you still up for that? I don't think we've ever met on any of these meetings, so that's fine. Um, Executive Committee for the Central Valley Division League of the California Cities. I'm sorry, I didn't know I was the executive committee on that one, so it shows doesn't meet very often, but uh, I'll, I'll continue to do it, um, unless someone else would like it. How about the Economic Development Committee? Vice Mayor Klein, you still good with that? Yep. Okay. The Local Emergency Planning Committee? Councilmember Lane, you still good with that? Okay. Um, 
The San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District Board, I'm no longer on that committee. Um, I'm actually on the next page. I'm actually a governing board member now. I, I, I think that um, appointment will probably come to uh, come up at um, this Wednesday night's mayor's meeting and it could be someone from another city and, unless someone here would like to be nominated for that. It doesn't entail much. I think um, they meet maybe once a year. Uh, if, if there's if there's someone has a desire to be on it, I'll make a recommendation. Otherwise, I'll just scratch my name from it. Okay. You can nominate me. You like? Okay. Okay, uh, Councilmember Lane, you okay with the Stanislaus Elder Abuse Prevention Alliance? Yeah, I'd like to see if we could start meeting again. We haven't met in. On that committee? No, it's yeah. been a long time. Okay. Just to kind of get more familiar with it again. Okay. Is that something, Mr. Wallace, you can look into? Yeah, we can follow up on that. Okay. Um, the Stancock Policy Board. Vice Mayor Klein, you I'm, want to stay I'm here? fine. Okay. Council Member Dross, are you okay with it? All right. The, we're all on the former Stanislaw Series Redevelopment Commission. Um, the Surface Water Joint Powers Authority Board, are you okay? I am. Okay, as well, uh, the, and, and like, I'd like to keep that one until at least we get it in place and then you guys can go ahead and take over, but we're, we're, in the, we're going down the homeward stretch on that. So the Traffic Safety Committee, Altamar Drossett? That's fine. You know, how about the Tuolumne River Regional Park Committee and the Volunteer Firefighter Length of Service Qualification Review Committee? Perfect. Okay. How about the Whitmore Mansion, excuse me, Whitmore House Preservation Committee? Fine. You okay? The Youth Commission, Councilor Trossett? Yep. Uh, the West Turlock Sub Basin Groundwater Sustainability Agency, the JPA. You okay with yeah. that? Okay. And then I'm on the San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District Governing Board. So um, it looks like uh, if you, there weren't too many changes, I don't think, maybe just the one here. Um, so at this point, do we need to give direction on that, or is that enough for what um, we we've done? If you're good. Just did that by consensus. You're fine. Okay. All right. So uh, at this time, I'll look for um, a motion, or just no. Is everybody in agreement with that? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. We're all in agreement with that. So um, we'll go ahead and into 2018. We'll make we'll continue with those. Next, we will move on to um, the TOT committee appointments. And I saw in our packet here that we, is this something that, Mr. Wells, you want to handle or you want me to just go through it? I, I can. Okay. It as, so the uh, applications were open uh, in December. We received six applications after meeting with the two uh, council members and discussing uh, the options for appointment. We originally were considering three um, resident or citizen involvement uh, the committee after a conversation with the two council members Jurassic and um, Rhino both uh, recommended go ahead and put all uh, six applicants on the committee as an ad hoc committee there was uh, really no downside to uh, turning people away from being involved in our uh, citizen activities related to the TOT committee so that's the recommendation for appointing all six those individuals are Dahlia David Josh Steely Ryan Thornberry Sheila Brandt Shane Parson and Lisa Montero Moore so uh, with the council's uh, approval uh, the first meeting would be um, January 16th at 6 o'clock here in the community center um, so we just we do need action from council to appoint those folks to the ad hoc committee and we'll start meeting and the goal would be to get a plan of attack put together um, in this calendar year and then uh, revisit um, whether this committee needs to continue after that okay are there, there any comments one, I would make a motion this one we do okay yeah. I move for approval yeah. second Okay, we have a motion and a second. Can we have the roll call vote, please? Council Member DeRosset? Yes. Council Member Lane? Yes. Vice Mayor Klein? Yes. Council Member Rhino? Yes. And Mayor Vieira? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you. Next, we will move to conflict of interest declaration. Is there anyone on the council that would like to declare a conflict of interest on any of the consent calendar items or one new business item? 
Um, following up on the, the last meeting, uh, I will declare a conflict of interest on item number six, um, the final adoption of second reading of the ordinance. Um, but I believe... Um, uh, on consent I... calendar items, you don't have to leave the dais. Okay. And you can just note your abstentions on other items as well. Okay. So now do, or, or, do I... Or yep. no votes on certain items too. Do we consider that in the whole or just do that one separately? You, either way, but... Okay. It's your choice, but you also don't have to. Why, why don't we do it separately? Because there might be a different vote on that one. Right. Okay. Um, so with that, uh, we'll move to the consent calendar. All matters listed on the consent calendar are considered routine in nature and will be enacted by a single motion unless otherwise requested by an individual council member or the public for special consideration. Otherwise, the recommendation of staff will be accepted and acted upon by roll call vote. So at this time, we will pull item number six for separate consideration, and I'll look for direction on the other items. Or, or excuse me, does anyone on the council <coughs> like any of the other items pulled for further discussion? Okay, anyone in the audience? Seven, okay. Okay, I'll look for direction on the other items. Move to approve one, two, three, A, four, five, eight. Second. second. Okay, we have a motion by Councilmember Drossett, a second by Vice Mayor Klein. Can we have the roll call vote, please? Councilmember Drossett? Yes. Councilmember Lane? Yes. Vice Mayor Klein? Yes. Councilmember Rhino? Yes. And Mayor Vieira? Yes. Motion passes five zero. Okay, item number six, again, I am abstaining from this, but um, at this time, are there any questions or comments? Okay, with that, I'll look for direction on that item. Move for approval of item six. Second. We have a motion and a second. Can we have the roll call vote, please? Council Member DeRossett? Yes. Council Member Lane? Yes. Vice Mayor Klein? Yes. Council Member Rhino? No. And we have an abstention from Mayor Vieira. Motion passes 311, abstention uh, by Mayor Vieira due to a conflict. Okay, we will move to item number seven, resolution number 2018-01, awarding the construction contract for the Mitchell Road Phase One Improvement Project to George Reed, Inc., authorizing a 10% contingency, approve the budget amendment, and authorize the city manager to execute the contract. Mr. Pratt? I just want to know what that is. That is the intersection improvements of service of Mitchell, as well as Mitchell Road reconstruction south of Mitchell to the freeway um, off ramps. All right, thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay, are there any questions of the council? Well, with that, I'll look for direction on that item. Move to approve resolution number 2018-01. Second. Do we have a motion and a second? Can we have the roll call vote, please? Council Member Tarasip? Yes. Council Member Lane? Yes. Vice Mayor Klein? Yes. Council Member Rhino? Yes. And Mayor Vieira? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you. Um, next, we will move on to unfinished business. We have none this evening. We have no public hearings. We have one new business item resolution number 2018 03, repealing resolution number 2016 04, and establishing the rules and procedures for the City Council. Mr. Wells? Thank you, Mayor. This item is being brought back to the Council per Council direction back in 2016. Um, we had a conversation relative to the term uh, of the Vice Mayor position. So um, in years past, we've had a two-year term for the Vice Mayor, um, and uh, the direction was to bring it back for this Council to consider. Um, one thing that did change between January of 2016 when we last discussed this was the move to the even-year elections per SB 4. 15. So that changed the time frames a little bit. So now rather than having an election this past year in 2017, we now have an election in 2018. So revisiting um, those two things. One, we updated our rules and procedures to reflect that we are now even year elections. Um, that was a minor amendment there on the first page. And then asking for council direction whether you want to change the vice mayor term from two years to one year uh, per the previous direction or leave it as is. Uh, as it stands right now, we've left it as a two year term. Um, but we need that council direction on that one. And then the last one is um, consistency issue in the existing rules and regulations we have been using. We've been referred to as action minutes for our minutes, but for, in practice, we've been doing far more than action minutes. So for, from a staff perspective, we'd like to move back to action minutes. So we look for council um, 
concurrence that that direction is, is consistent. We move back to the action minutes. Um, we feel now with our video capabilities and our ability to put our um, all of our meetings online and anybody can go on our website now and click to that link and see the video that that's a more accurate reflection of the minutes and that it takes away the interpretation of somebody trying to capture the minutes without getting that and some legal cases have determined that you're safer on a legal footing to refer to the action minutes and let the video speak for it because it captures a little more than somebody's interpretation of words so those are the two items we look for to direction on um, and any changes to the rules and procedures that you see fit um, the resolution is written for those changes but any direction we can make those changes per your, your request okay are there any questions of staff on this this time, is there anyone in the audience that would like to comment on this? Okay, I'll bring it back to council for some discussion or direction. Well, you know, going back to the mayor, uh, the vice mayor's position, you know, I'd like to see the vice mayor's position stay at a two-year two-year cycle as it relates to uh, the election process, but because of the year extension then I would like to have the, the vice mayor's position, you know, um, assigned for one year to somebody on the council, and then after the next election, go back to the two-year cycle. Okay. I, um, I, I can support that. I, I believe it's um, council member Rhino's next cycle, and I just wonder, would you be okay with us doing that? Sure. Okay. Um, you know, considering Vice Mayor Klein's in that role, does anybody have a problem just having him extend for another year? No? Okay. Um, okay, so are you willing to do that? So another we're going to appoint Vice Mayor, uh, Council Member Rhino for a year, and then on the next cycle we go, is that what we're, that's, are we talking that way or giving me another year? I think we're giving you another year, and then she would have the two years after that year, which would co coincide with the election cycle. Well, I, unless you don't want it. No, I'll, I'll do it, but I want the consensus of the of the council because you know my two year terms up, and not knowing whether Are Council you, Member Lane or Council Member Rhino runs for re-election, <clears throat> you know. So, would you like it for one year? No, I'm fine if you want to keep it another okay, year. Okay, then then I I'm say we I'm fine. I think they you're okay with it. That's fine. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm fine. Okay. okay. You get you don't get any more pay for that. No, know. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We do need that resol we do need that re resolution. That, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, the resolution as approved, we would need because we're not we wouldn't change the rules and regulations that are written, so it stays exactly the way it is. So the resolution as written will be um, fine. We'll just add to it to reflect the appointment of um, Vice Mayor Klein, unless, Tom, you see a difference. Because we didn't change the rules and regulations to change that two-year. We're, in essence, the temporary thing, I think we can just add one little statement in that resolution to clarify that, and I think it, we should be covered. It's always, uh, you know, uh, as proposed by the mayor and ratified by the council, and you just did it, you know, and it's a unique situation, so I think we're good. So do we need a, um, a roll call vote on the yeah. resolution? Okay. So I'll look for direction on this item. Move to approve resolution number 2016-04 with the action minutes changed. Going to action minutes, correct? Well, just resolution 2018-03. 2018-03. Yeah. Okay. That's with the one-year appointment to Klein, for Klein, yep. Vice Mayor Klein. And we needed the action minutes put in there as well. It's already, actually, it's already in there. Perfect. So just Keep confirming that. So I got you. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Can we have the roll call vote, please? Council Member DeRossett? Yes. Council Member Lane? Yes. Vice Mayor Klein? Yes. Council Member Rhino? Yes. And Mayor Vieira? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Okay, next we'll move to Council Member referrals. Is there anyone on the council that would like to have an item placed on a future agenda? Okay, hearing none, uh, we'll move to reports. Uh, I have nothing to report, just Happy New Year and looking forward to. Uh, 2018 should be exciting with um, our hundred year um, I guess I'll call it celebration but with that um, Councilmember Rhino nothing tonight mayor vice mayor Klein nothing Councilmember nothing. Lane Councilmember Drossett nothing okay uh, Suzanne 
Uh, thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to update the council and let you know that we received some of our property tax revenue early and we were not um, forced to use that sewer loan. Um, we got the money about three weeks ahead of schedule. Great. That's always good to know. Thank you. Tom? Nothing to report, Mayor. Mr. Wells? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as was mentioned earlier, the downtown project is nearing completion as they're wrapping up some final items. We have scheduled the grand opening uh, for January 22nd before the next council meeting at 4.30 in the afternoon. So obviously we hope all the council can be there and citizens as well. Uh, still some final work. I'll let Daryl uh, provide any updates there. Um, we do have on the calendar this week for the Blaker Brewings grand opening. They'll be celebrating that this Friday afternoon at 2 o'clock. Um, Monday, uh, City Hall will be closed for um, observing the holiday for that Monday. The centennial meeting, the next, next calendar, calendar item for that is on Tuesday, the 16th at 5.30 here in the community center, followed by the TOT committee uh, at 6 o'clock. So those meetings will be happening on uh, Tuesday evening of next week. And then lastly, uh, blood drive, um, the annual police versus fire blood drive will be occurring on January 19th. That's a Friday, so I encourage folks to sign up for that. It'll be here in the community center from, uh, I believe, 11 to 5. So okay. thank you. Tom? Chamber installation dinner on January 26 at 6 p.m. in this um, uh, community center if anybody wants to attend. Daryl? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just finishing up uh, 4th Street with some punch items, a little bit of landscaping left, and a few other items we're checking on. He'll be ready for our ribbon cutting ceremony in a couple weeks. Okay. Brent? Yes, in celebration of our centennial, uh, the police department developed a centennial police badge. We'll be wearing them all year. Nice. Great. Okay, and Jeremy, I think. All right, with that, we will adjourn to our next regularly scheduled meeting, which will be on Monday, January 22nd at 6 p.m. Thank you. Six to nothing. Six to nothing, George is